Hi everybody, there's a new plugin for you today, but I won't introduce it myself. I have a guest today on my channel. I think you all know him. And guess what? Yes, he likes coffee. Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In today's episode, we'll be looking at a new plugin from Toucan Studios. I was talking with John from Toucan Studios about this new plugin that he's describing as a denoser plugin. I wasn't sure what he meant by denoser and assumed that because English is not his native language, maybe he meant denoiser. As it turns out, in Germany, many audio engineers refer to the sound that he's talking about as being nosy. Or sounding like someone is holding their noise while speaking or singing. Of course, in the United States, nosy has an entirely different meaning. Here in the States, many audio engineers refer to the sound as being honky. Of course, depending on your age and region of the country, honky may also have a derogatory meaning to you. So what to call a plugin if the description may be offensive to some and not make sense to others? John settled on calling the plugin Sphinx because, as you know, the Sphinx is missing its nose. Let's take a look. The project I've got open is a work in progress of a cover of Royals by Lord. Let's take a listen to this chorus and pay particular attention to the guitars. Overall, those guitars don't sound bad, but if you have a discerning ear, you may notice a little bit of what John would call nose, or other people may call hockey. I've got to figure out something else to say for that. The guitars were tracked using Reamp Studios by Audio Assault, with a different amp model for the left and right side. The equalizer stack on each amp sim has been left at its default setting for the time being. Let's take a look at the guitar's bus. Here we have an instance of Sphinx, which is currently not active. We'll get into that momentarily. I've got White Channel from IK Multimedia as my channel strip, and you can see that I'm doing a small amount of EQ and compression at the bus level, and I've also got a secondary compressor to help glue the left and right sides together a bit better. Let's activate Sphinx and take a look at the controls to see if we can remove a little bit of the honkiness from the guitars. I'll enable the plug-in, and let's solo the guitars bus. The controls on Sphinx are pretty intuitive. We have two sections, Nose 1 and Nose 2, with a frequency knob on each that allows you to dial in the desired frequency that you'd like to attenuate. Under the Remove Nose section, we have three buttons, A Bit, More, and Heavy. And if you'll notice in the meter up above, as I click on each of these, it appears that the buttons are widening the Q or bandwidth of the selected frequency. The Listen button boosts the selected frequency to allow you to hear it a bit better, while the Solo button completely solos the selected frequency. Let's play back the guitars in solo and toggle the plug-in off and on to see if you can hear the difference. I'll set this section for repeat, and let's take a listen. I've currently got the Remove Nose parameter set at a bit, and the work that it's doing is very subtle, but at the same time, once you hear this sound, you can't unhear it. Let's play through that same section again with the plugin Engage, and I'll press the Listen button so you can clearly hear the frequency that's being removed. And again in solo. Something else that I found helpful with this plugin is using the Delta Solo feature in Reaper to clearly hear what's being removed. I'll play that same portion of music again, and this time I'll Alt-click the wet-dry knob so we can hear what's being removed. If you use the Delta Solo feature, be sure to click the wet-dry knob again to disable it. I'd like to focus again on the Listen button. Using the Listen button on this plugin is very similar to boosting a frequency in an EQ in an effort to find what frequency you'd like to reduce. I'll toggle this on, and let's take a listen as we sweep the frequencies.
Let's try this again with the guitars unsoloed and take a listen in context. What I'd like to try is a bit more and heavy and see what fits the music best. I'm hoping that I can remove that annoying whistling sound, noise, key, whatever you'd like to call it, without negatively affecting other frequencies around it. Let's take a listen. Let me live that fantasy. Okay, that didn't just happen. As you can hear, Sphinx does a great job of removing the hockey. He cannot say hockey on camera. Some people find it offensive. Sphinx did a great job of removing that annoying whistling sound from the guitars without negatively impacting the rest of the sound. It feels like the guitars are still full, but it just removes that little bit of something that was throwing off the mix. While I haven't tried it on anything other than guitars, I'm sure that this can be quite useful for removing annoying noises from nasally vocals, bass guitar, maybe even cymbals. Try it out on some of your own material and see what you think. Thanks to John for letting me try this out in advance. Back to you. I like coffee. Thank you, Mike, for your good explaining and the funny video. So I have another guest today, and this is Harry. Harry is a um, binaural stereo microphone from the early 70s. And I put him up uh, as a room mic for drums. So let's hear what Harry hears. So here's a drum recording with Harry in solo mode. And don't worry, um, Harry is a quite old microphone. So he should be considered more like a lo-fi thing. Now let's get to the swings. And here I have um, this uh, nose I found. And this nose I found. So Let's remove those two noses. And now play it back, engaged and not engaged. And maybe in context, not engaged and you'll immediately hear what's happening if I click this little box here. And that's it for today. I hope you have fun with the plugins and bye bye.